Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Ramya with the Midday News. The headlines Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address 16th East Asia Summit virtually today. Supreme Court appoints three member expert committee to probe into Pegasus surveillance case. Home Minister Amit Shah says Prime Minister Narendra Modi's reforms have always been based on the needs of the poor and he has given a human angle to GDP. Chemical and Fertilizers Minister Dr Mansukh Mandavia says investment in India's pharma sector has gone up after the pandemic. Over 103 crore 53 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country so far under the nationwide vaccination drive, recovery rate at 98.19%. Former Punjab Chief Minister and Congress leader Captain Amrinder Singh to launch a new political party. Indian Railways run 668 trips of 110 special trains to ensure smooth travel of passengers during this festive season. In Tamil Nadu, six people killed and more than 10 injured in a firecracker accident. United Nations warns of global temperature rise of around 2.7 degrees Celsius and says the clock is ticking. And in the men's T20 cricket World Cup, England to face Bangladesh and Scotland to take on Namibia in Abu Dhabi. As India created history by administering 100 crore doses of vaccine against COVID-19, All India Radio salutes all the doctors, nurses, other frontline workers and all those who got vaccinated and made this possible. Even though the country has achieved this feat, we caution our listeners that the battle against COVID is not yet over. We appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and also help others get vaccinated. During the festival season, please follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki doori for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will attend the 16th East Asia Summit which will be held virtually today. The East Asia Summit is the premier leaders led forum in the Indo-Pacific. Since its inception in 2005, it has played a significant role in the strategic and geopolitical evolution of East Asia. We have more from our correspondent. At the 16th East Asia Summit, leaders will discuss matters of regional and international interest and concern including maritime security, terrorism and COVID-19 cooperation. Leaders are also expected to accept declaration on mental health, economic recovery through tourism and green recovery which are being co-sponsored by India. Apart from the 10 ASEAN member states, East Asia Summit includes India, China, Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, United States and Russia. India, being a founding member of the East Asia Summit, is committed to strengthening the East Asia Summit and making it more effective for dealing with contemporary challenges. It is also an important platform for furthering practical cooperation in the Indo-Pacific by building open the convergence between ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific and Indo-Pacific Oceans initiative. Anupam Mish, AI News, Delhi. The Prime Minister will attend the 18th ASEAN India Summit to be held virtually tomorrow at the invitation of Sultan of Brunei. The summit will be attended by heads of state and heads of government of the ASEAN countries. The 18th ASEAN India Summit will review the status of ASEAN India strategic partnership and take stock of progress made in key areas including COVID-19 and health, trade and commerce. connectivity and education and culture important regional and international developments including post pandemic economic recovery will also be discussed the supreme court today ordered a probe into the pegasus surveillance case by a three member expert committee the committee will be headed by retired supreme court judge justice r v ravindran a bench comprising chief justice of india n v ramana and justice surya kant and justice hema kohli observed there has been no specific denial by the center on the issue 
The Supreme Court will monitor the function of the committee. The court observed that while it is the era of information technology, which is crucial for our daily lives, it is equally important to safeguard the privacy of citizens. Home Minister Amit Shah has said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi's reforms have always been based on the needs of the poor and Mr Modi has given a human angle to GDP. Mr Shah said this while addressing the inaugural session of National Conference on Delivering Democracy reviewing two decades of Prime Minister Narendra Modi as head of government in New Delhi. He said that Mr Modi initiated projects that contributed to India's development in all sectors. He said the GDP should grow but its beneficiary should be the poor and needy. The minister also said 19 lakh crore rupees have been sent through direct benefit transfer supporting the poor and needy across the nation under various schemes jab direct benefit transfer scheme chalu hui vidwa sahay ka paisa seedha vidwa ke bank account mein chala gaya vruddh sahay ka paisa seedha vruddh ke ghar mein chala gaya corona aaya 20 crore matao ko 500 500 rupya har mahine diya narendra modi ji ne divyangon ko diya jab seedha iske account mein chala gaya bicholiya hi nahi bacha aadha paisa log kha jate the usse bache tab malum pada ki jan dhan yojana kya hai ab tak 19 lakh crore rupya direct benefit transfer scheme ke tahat logon ke ghar mein pahunch gaya Chemical and Fertilizers Minister Dr Mansukh Mandavia has said that the investment in India's pharma sector has gone up after the pandemic. He said the government has always been pro industry and industry friendly. Speaking at Invest India's Investors Summit virtually, Dr Mandavia said the leading companies of the world should take advantage of the efforts being made by the government of India to make the country the best investment destination. He said today India is the largest manufacturer and supplier of generic medicines. The minister said India is seeing to it that the world gets affordable medicine. India is a pharmacy of world. Aisa hum bolte hain aur keval bolte nahi hain ye hum karte bhi hain. Duniya mein aaj generic medicine largest manufacturers and supplier India hai. Humne duniya ko medicine diya. दुनिया को मेडिसिन दे रहे हैं हम वसुदेव कुटुम्बकम की अवधारणा को मानते हैं यानी कि हम इंडिया में मेडिसिन पैदा करें लेकिन हम हमारे लिए बाद में कर रहे हैं हमारे लिए बिजनेस बाद में है पहले दुनिया को अफोर्डेबल मेडिसिन कैसे मिले वो हम देखते हैं More than 103 crore 53 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered in the country so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Health Ministry said over 55 lakh 89 thousand doses were administered yesterday. India reported more than 13 thousand new cases during the last 24 hours. India's active case load stands at 1 lakh 62,661, and it is the lowest in 242 days. Active cases account for less than 1 percent of the total cases, and it is currently at 0.48 percent, the lowest since March last year. The ministry said the recovery rate is currently at 98.19 percent, the highest since March last year. Daily positivity rate is at 1.03%. Health Ministry has said that more than 107 crore 81 lakh vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far through the free of cost channel and through direct state procurement category it said more than 12 crore 37 lakh balance and unutilized covid vaccine doses are still available with the states and union territories to be
the West Bengal government to take measures to contain the rise in number of COVID-19 cases in Kolkata. Kolkata has reported almost 27% increase in positivity rate in the past week from 5.6% in the week ending October 14 to 7.1% in the week ending October 21. Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan recently wrote to West Bengal Health Secretary Narayan Swaroop Nigam saying that Kolkata is one of the certain districts in the country that have started showing a worrying trend in the daily new cases and the positivity rate in recent weeks. Delhi University Vice Chancellor Yogesh Singh has said that the decision to reopen the university would be taken after Diwali. The announcement comes even as students and teachers have been demanding the reopening of DU campus and resuming offline classes as cases continue to be below 50. Vice Chancellor has also said that the timings of the college might be increased to accommodate extra number of students and manage proper social distancing. Delhi University reopened from September 16 for the final year undergraduate and postgraduate students. This permission, however, was limited only for the students that require laboratory work. Former Punjab Chief Minister and Congress stalwart Captain Amrinder Singh today said he will launch a new political party soon. Interacting with media at Chandigarh, Captain Amrinder Singh said he has finalized the name and symbol of his new political party and nod of the election commission is being taken. Our lawyers are today working with the election commission. So let us wait for the election commission to decide. But our lawyers are on the job and we have made a request for symbol and we have made a request for names also. He claimed his detractors in Congress were threatening and harassing his supporters. Captain Amrinder vowed he will not rest till he secured the future of his people and his state. In Assam, campaigning for the bipoles will come to an end this evening. Bipoles to be held at Mariani, Thora, Bhavanipur, Gosai Gao and Tamulpur assembly seats on the 30th of this month. A total of 31 candidates are in the fray. All the political parties and candidates are making last efforts to woo nearly 8 lakh voters. Senior BJP leader and Chief Minister Hemant Biswa Sarma, Union Minister Sarbanand Sonowal, State Congress President Bhupen Bora, AIUDF Chief Badruddin Ajmal, Chief of Raijor Dal Akhil Gogoi are holding rallies at various places where polling will be held. The BJP is contesting at three seats while its partner UPPL will fight in two seats. Congress, BPF, AIUDF and independent candidates are also in the fray. In the meantime, the Election Commission has issued a warning to Assam Chief Minister Dr. Hemant Biswa Sarma for violating model code of conduct. The EC also has cautioned him to be more careful and exercise restraint in future and strictly follow the provisions of model code of conduct while making public utterances. The campaign for Hangul and Sindhgi by election in Karnataka will conclude this evening. BJP has fielded Shiv Raj Sajjan in the Hangul Assembly constituency and Ramesh Bhusanur from Sindhgi. The Congress party has fielded Ashok Managuli from Sindhgi and Srinivas Mani from Hangul constituency. The JDS has fielded Nazia Shakil Ahmed Angadi from Sindhgi and Niaz Sheikh from Hangul. The by-election was necessitated due to the demise of legislators MC Managoli of JDS in Singri and CM Udasi of BJP from Hangul. The by-election will be held on October 30th and counting of votes will be held on November 2nd. The Indian Railways has made special arrangements in this ongoing festive season for the passengers travelling to their native places to celebrate festivals with their families. For the convenience of rail travellers and to clear extra rush of passengers during this season, Railways is running 668 trips of 110 special trains from Durga Puja till Chhat Puja this year. The Railway Ministry said augmentation of coaches in regular trains is being done to ensure the berth availability during this festive rush. Crowd controlling measures are being done with the supervision of Railway Protection Force RPF staff. Talking exclusively to AIR News, Union Minister of State for Railways, Rao Sahab Narnwe, said more trains can be run in the future to handle the passenger rush. 
रेलवे ने त्योहार को देखते हुए अतिरिक्त 600 ज्यादा ट्रेनें चला रही है देश में अलग रेलवे शो से एयर ट्रेनें चल रही है उत्तर से लेकर दक्षिण के राज्य से तमाम एयर ट्रेनें चल रही है जरूरत पड़ने पर और ट्रेनें हम चला सकते हैं लगातार हम इसके मॉनिटरिंग कर रहे हैं सभी डीआरएम को अतिरिक्त ट्रेनें चलाने के लिए निर्देश दिए गए हैं। रेलवे बोर्ड इस पर नजर रखी हुई है अगर कोई दिक्कत है तो हम और इसमें ट्रेन बढ़ा सकते हैं President Ramnath Kovind today paid homage to former president K R Narayanan on his birth anniversary at Rashtrapati Bhavan. Mr Kovind and officials of Rashtrapati Bhavan paid floral tributes in front of a portrait of K R Narayanan. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address 16th East Asia Summit virtually today. Supreme Court appoints three-member expert committee to probe into Pegasus surveillance case. Home Minister Amit Shah says Prime Minister Narendra Modi's reforms have always been based on the needs of the poor, and he has given a human angle to GDP. Chemical and Fertilizers Minister Dr. Mansukh Mandviya says investment in India's pharma sector has gone up after the pandemic. Over 103 crore 53 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country so far under the nationwide vaccination drive recovery rate at 98.19%. Former Punjab Chief Minister and Congress leader Captain Amrinder Singh to launch a new political party. Indian Railways run 668 trips of 110 special trains to ensure smooth travel of passengers during this festive season in Tamil Nadu. Six people killed and more than ten injured in a firecracker accident. United Nations warns of global temperature rise of around 2.7 degrees Celsius and says the clock is ticking. In men's T20 Cricket World Cup, England to face Bangladesh and Scotland to take on Namibia in Abu Dhabi. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. <laughs> Welcome back to the Midday News on All India Radio. In Tamil Nadu, the death toll in the firecracker accident yesterday has risen to six. More than ten people have been injured in the accident when fire broke out at a cracker shop at Shankarapuram, Kallakudichi district last night. Electricity and revenue officials are at the venue looking out for the missing workers at the go-down in the debris. More from our Chennai correspondent. The cracker shops were situated near the national highway where it was easier for the passers by to stop and purchase crackers and it was a little bit crowded due to the festive season initial inquiries by the police revealed that the fire began at the wholesale cracker shop and later spread to the go down and nearby e trees resulting in explosion of gas cylinders the cause of the fire is yet to be ascertained fire tenders were called from nearby areas to extinguish the fire after 3 hours Expressing deep sorrow at the incident Tamil Nadu Chief Minister MK Stalin has announced an excrescio of rupees 5 lakh to each of the family members who died in the fire accident and rupees 1 lakh to the wounded taking treatment at the government hospital Joy yeah news Chennai United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has stressed the need to close the leadership gap in climate action He made the plea at the launch of the UN Environment Programme's Emissions Gap Report 2021 entitled The Heat is On. Mr Guterres said the report shows that with the present nationally determined contributions and other firm commitments of countries across the globe the world is still on a track for a catastrophic global temperature rise of around 2.7 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. He reiterated that the clock is ticking he said the emissions gap is the result of a leadership gap but leaders can still make this a turning point to a greener future instead of a tipping point to climate catastrophe the most critical climate change conference since the paris agreement the 26th un climate change conference of the parties cop 26 
is to be hosted by United Kingdom in Glasgow from 31st of October to 12th of November. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will travel to Rome and Glasgow from the 29th of this month to 2nd of November to attend the 16th G20 Summit and the World Leader Summit of COP26. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison yesterday released the country's long-term emissions reduction plan to deliver net zero emissions by 2050. The UK, which holds the presidency of the summit, published a climate finance delivery plan on Monday to provide clarity on when and how developed countries will meet the $100 billion climate finance goal. The new outlook states that the goal will be met from 2023. This is three years later than what was committed to by the developed countries at the Paris summit in 2015. In an exclusive interview with AII News on the developed nations delay in meeting the climate financing commitment ahead of COP26, environmentalist Dr. C.K. Vashne opined that developed countries will not transfer their innovative assets easily and it will be guarded behind a calibrated diplomatic negotiation. Question of giving up the patents and giving up the technology transfer free of cost for the developing countries freely and happily doesn't exist. This kind of a thing is very cautiously guarded through the negotiating and all kinds of diplomatic maneuvering. And therefore, it is like this. And we should also remember that uh, many of these delegations will have members from the industries and from the technological innovators which are really possessing these kind of patents and exclusive rights. And they just don't want to really do away with their inventions as well as technology that they have developed after making initial investment. Dr. Vashne said India has not utilized carbon space compared to other countries in the world. Our total contribution at present is only 7%. And also if we take per capita emission of carbon dioxide, then we are well below the global average. In fact, look at our population and look at our the developmental stage. We have not really used any of the carbon space which others have already utilized. As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events are being organized by the government as a part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Now, let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News, Birth of a Nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. 27th of October is the death anniversary of the great freedom fighter, revolutionary and journalist Brahma Bandhav Upadhyay. He was born on February 11. 1861 in Khonan village of Hooghly district of West Bengal. When he was in high school, he became inclined towards the nationalist movement and during his college education, he plunged into the freedom movement. Brahmavandhav wanted to join the army of the Maharaja of Gwalior to learn the art of war and drive away the British. He made the effort twice but returned disappointed with the policy of the Maharaja. Like many of his contemporaries, Brahmo Bondov's desire was to establish national pride, coupled with a spiritual quest. His biographer, Julius Leipner, says, Brahmo Bondov made a significant contribution to the shaping of the new India, whose identity began to emerge from the first half of the 19th century. He was a contemporary and a friend of the poet Rabindranath Tagore and Vivekananda. Brahma Bandhav edited Bengali paper Sandhya and remained its editor till his last breath. He popularized Swaraj and the Swadeshi movement through Sandhya and another Bengali weekly, Yugantha, and wrote against the British colonialism and European cultural hegemony in Sofia in English. On 10th September 1907, Brahmo was arrested and prosecuted on a charge of sedition. His articles were found to be inflammatory. He refused to defend himself in the court 
and on 23rd September 1907, a statement was submitted to the court through his counsel, Barrister Chitranjan Das. In the statement, Brahmavandav said he accepted the entire responsibility of the publication, management and conduct of Sundha, adding he was the writer of the article, which appeared in the paper on 13th of August 1907. It was one of the articles forming the subject matter of Brahmavandav's prosecution. He said he did not want to take part in the trial because he did not believe that in carrying out his humble share of the God-appointed mission of Swaraj, he is in any way accountable to the alien people who happen to rule over Indians and whose interest is and necessarily be in the way of Indians' true national development. During the trial, Brahmavandav reported pain in his abdomen and was admitted to the Campbell Hospital in Kolkata. He had undergone a surgery but could not overcome his sufferings and passed away on the 27th of October 1907. During the 46-year-old life, Brahmavandav Upadhyay sought truth relentlessly and engaged in the freedom struggle against foreign domination. On 27th October 1904, revolutionary freedom fighter Jatindra Nath Das was born in Kolkata. At the tender age of just 17, he participated in the non-cooperation movement in 1921. Jatin was arrested by the British on 14th June 1929 in connection with the Lahore conspiracy case relating to the killing of British police officer John Saunders by revolutionaries. A crusader for rights of political prisoners, Jatin sat on a 63-day-long hunger strike in the Lahore Central Jail in protest against mistreatment of the prisoners by the British. During the course of this strike, he had to endure numerous hardships. Ultimately, Jatin made supreme sacrifice for the motherland on 13th September 1929. Subhash Chandra Bose described him as the young Dadichi of India. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. In the Men's T20 Cricket World Cup, today, England will face Bangladesh at 3.30 p.m. and Scotland will take on Namibia at 7.30 p.m. Both the matches will be played in Abu Dhabi. Now, let us take a look at the weather update for today. National capital Delhi will have mainly clear sky. Minimum temperature was 15 degrees Celsius, while maximum is expected to be 28 degrees. Mumbai will also have mainly clear sky, recorded a minimum temperature of 22 degrees Celsius, while the maximum is expected to be 34 degrees. Chennai is expected to have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. Minimum temperature was 25 degrees Celsius, while the maximum is expected to be nearly 33 degrees. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. Srinagar will have mainly clear sky. Jammu will also have mainly clear sky. Leh will see a mainly clear sky. Gilgit will have mainly clear sky while temperature will vary between 7 and 22 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad will have mainly clear sky. Vishakhapatnam will witness generally cloudy sky with light rain. And Hyderabad will have partly cloudy sky with haze. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address 16th East Asia Summit virtually today. Supreme Court appoints three-member expert committee to probe into Pegasus surveillance case. Home Minister Amit Shah says Prime Minister Narendra Modi's reforms have always been based on the needs of the poor and he has given a human angle to GDP. Chemical and Fertilizers Minister Dr. Mansukh Mandavir says investment in India's pharma sector has gone up after the pandemic. Over 103 crore 53 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Recovery rate at 98.19%. Former Punjab Chief Minister and Congress Leader Captain Amrinder Singh to launch a new political party. Indian Railways runs 668 trips of 110 special trains to ensure smooth travel of passengers during festive season. In Tamil Nadu, 
six people killed and more than 10 injured in a firecracker accident. United Nations warns of global temperature rise of around 2.7 degrees Celsius and says the clock is ticking. And in the men's T20 Cricket World Cup, England to face Bangladesh and Scotland to take on Namibia in Abu Dhabi. And with that, we end the midday news.